Hello fellow sim racers, and welcome to part eight of this sim racing setup guide. Today we're talking about brake bias, but if you've not seen any of the first seven parts of this series, then a link to a playlist containing all of my setup videos should be in the top right hand corner of your screen. The last few videos have contained quite a lot of information on what are fairly complex topics. Thankfully, brake bias or brake balance is one of the more simple setup changes you can make to a car. Simply put, adjusting the brake balance changes the proportion of brake force sent to the front and rear wheels. So why would you want to, for example, send more braking force to the front of the car than the rear? Well, as we've previously discussed, as you brake, load transfers towards the front of the car, or perhaps more accurately, the front tires experience more load than the rear. And a tire that's placed under more load has more grip, up to a point. So that means that the front tires have more grip available to help the car decelerate. Conversely, that also means that when you're braking, the rear tires have less grip, which means that you can't apply as much braking force through them before they brake traction. So setting the brake bias is an important part of obtaining the most efficient use of the brakes and therefore stopping quicker. But it can also be used to alter how the car behaves during what is one of the most critical parts of cornering, the turn-in phase. In almost every circumstance, you'll either be braking through the turn-in phase or transitioning off of the brakes at turn-in. So it's easy to see why the ratio of braking force sent to the front and rear tires would have an impact here. In most racing sims, Brake bias is expressed as a value between 0 and 100, which effectively represents the percentage of brake force that's being sent to the front wheels. So, if the bias is set above 50%, more brake pressure is being sent to the front wheels, and vice versa. In most sims, this represents the proportion of braking power being sent to each axle, measured at the master cylinder. But, the Assetto Corsa series are the odd ones out here, and the brake bias reading actually represents the braking force proportion measured at the wheels. There are up and downsides to both approaches, and to be honest, it's not a very useful discussion to have here. What this means, in practice, for sim racers, is that brake bias settings in Assetto Corsa will be higher than in other sims. For example, a GT3 car in iRacing may have a brake bias setting of around 53%, while in Assetto Corsa or ACC, it's much more likely to be over 70%. The amount of brake force being sent to the front and rear may actually be the same in both cases, but they're measured in different places. So, what effect does this have on handling? Well, as you move the brake bias towards the front of the car, it will tend to be more stable under braking. But the downside is that this will start to introduce turn-in understeer. Conversely, if you move the bias towards the rear, the car will be less stable under braking, particularly if you're not braking in a straight line. This can introduce turn-in oversteer as well, but keep in mind that there is an operating window in which the brakes are operating most efficiently, and moving too far from the optimum point will lengthen braking zones and slow your lap times. There's not too much more to it than that, but there are a couple of useful tips to get you started. First of all, the general consensus is that you want the front wheels to start locking before the rears. This makes the car much less of a handful when you're braking just past the limit. If you're not sure what's happening, you can use apps, data readouts, or replays to see what's going on. Next up, in my experience, stock setups tend to have the brake bias set in the right ballpark, so if you're going to make changes then it's definitely a case of less is more, and small changes should be all that's needed. If you've watched onboards from any top racing series, you may have seen drivers changing the brake bias several times a lap to eke out every last drop of performance available in the car. And the reason for this is simple. In a hard braking zone, you may want more front bias for stability, while in other corners, the understeer this will induce on turn-in may well be undesirable. This is advanced stuff, but the best of the best are able to manipulate the brake bias throughout the lap to gain that final tenth. While changing the bias multiple times per lap may be a bit beyond the scope of the average sim racer, it is a useful tool during longer races. Having the ability to change the way a car behaves on turn-in from the cockpit is very useful indeed, and it's something I'll often tweak throughout a longer stint to help manage the tyres, or to change the behaviour of the car as the fuel levels, tyres and the track evolve. So to sum things up, brake bias or brake balance settings control how your braking force is distributed to each axle. And in most cases, cars have their braking forces biased towards the front axle, because these tyres have more grip than the rears do during braking. 
Changing the bias has an effect on your stopping distance and how the car behaves during corner entry, and altering it from the cockpit during a race can be a very useful tool. So that's about all I have to say about brake balance. In the next video, we're going to talk about differentials and how they can be used to change the way your car sends its power through to the tyres. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others, then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.